to CCB students, the student ministry at Christ Church of the Valley. This is a place where you belong before you believe. My name is Janelle Criswell, and here's a few ways that you can belong. The first, if you haven't, make sure to follow us on our social media. This is where we like to post funny videos, memes, even great announcements that are coming out. So make sure to follow us there. Also, if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. This is a great place to get online content if you can't join us in person. And finally, if you're an incoming eighth grader or in high school right now, you're going to want to join us on July 26th through the 30th. We're going to CIY move. I promise you it will be the best week of the summer. So make sure to find out more information about that. And finally, if you take notes today, make sure to tag us on social media. We want to repost those because we love what you guys have to say. What is up everybody? Thank you for joining us online. Welcome again to our YouTube channel where we post weekly content, specifically our services that we are having in person but wanna make available to you so you can stay up to date with what we're talking about and how we are growing in our faith. So again, welcome, and before we start, I want you to copy that link at the top, click it, copy it, share it, and send it to a friend and just say, hey, watch this with me right now, because we believe that what we're talking about is specifically for you, and it'll benefit you, and hopefully help you grow in your faith. Now, last week we started a brand new series called And Action, with the plan words of and action, when we're talking about a movie set or a TV show, and basically how God has called us to have an active life. Um, a proactive life, not just something that we set on the sidelines and watch everybody else live theirs. But basically, God has given us instructions and encouragement to have an active and intentional life. Last week, we talked about God being the director of our lives, right? And this week, this week, I want to start off by asking you a question that we'll kind of dive into what we're talking about later. And that is this. If you could have any song play every single time you walked into a room, any song in the world, whether it's an older song or a newer song, any song in the world play when you walked in the room, what song would that be? Talk about it with your friends. Comment below, actually, in the chat. Let me know what song you would want. Basically, you're busting through the door. Everyone turns and looks at you, and this song comes on the loudspeakers. Mine, since you asked, thank you for asking, mine would be Coming In Hot by Lecrae. It's just such a good hype song. It always puts me in a good mood, and it's just a really good vibe, really good feel. I'm trying to think of some other ones, but I, I want to talk specifically today about sound, about music, and about the noise that we hear on a daily basis. Noise recognition is one of the coolest things. If you've never thought about it, think about it this way. Have you ever been driving in the car and you turn the radio on or you put your headphones in and you click shuffle and genuinely, genuinely within the first two seconds, you hear a noise, you hear a sound, and you automatically know the artist in the song. Like, how are, how is our minds so, so uniquely talented enough to do that? Like, we just, we remember things so well simply by the sounds that we hear. Um, I'm actually doing this in person with our youth group, but I'm going to be playing a couple movie themed soundtracks, some recognizable ones to where if you hear the beginning part of a, of a movie theme song, you automatically know what the movie is, right? So, for instance, we're going to be playing the Star Wars theme song, Jurassic Park theme song, Harry Potter, Pirates of the Caribbean. Very iconic, musically recognized songs to where you don't just hear them, but what happens is you actually can see, you can visualize the movie that this sound reminds you of. You see, sound is a foundational backbone, not just to the movies or the shows that we watch, but to our everyday lives. And as much as we can talk about sound and the ability for it to change our experience, the most interesting aspect, I believe, when it comes to sound is that you notice it most when it's nowhere to be found. You want an example? Think about awkward silence. Why isn't something happening? Why am I feeling this way? Why is there this weird tension of awkward silence whenever there is awkward silence, right? Sometimes you only notice sound when there is none. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the same can be true about God. I think you and I can be so encouraged in our day-to-day -day life when things are going good, when they're not terrible, when we're not struggling. Maybe we're, we've signed up for CIY. Maybe we're excited for stretch. Maybe we're excited for all the good things that are happening. And we notice that God is active in our life, right? 
but it's only when things get quiet. It's only when things start to slowly go downhill that we maybe begin to think that God has either moved on or gone silent in our lives. And that's exactly why we're talking about it in this series called In Action. Now again, last week we looked at God being the director of our lives. But this week, I want to take you back and I want to show you just how far back the power of sound goes when it relates to the presence of God in our lives. In fact, as I'm sure you're probably aware, so the Bible is a book that we read to get to know to God. In fact, the Bible, as I'm sure most of you know, is the book that we read to know God a little bit better. And in the very first book, the book of Genesis, the first two chapters, over the first two chapters, there's at least 13 to 15 times where it's written that God either said or God commanded. Just in the first two chapters. So from the very beginning, okay, from the very beginning of time, we can see the main source of sound. The main source of sound from the very beginning is coming from God, communicating and calling things to be. Check, check this slide out. These are just seven of those examples. Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. Genesis 1-5, and God called the light day. Genesis 1-6-8, and God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. God called the vault sky. Genesis 1-9, and God said, let, there water, let the water under the sky. Genesis 1-10, God called the dry ground land. Genesis 1.11, then God said, let the land produce vegetation. In Genesis 1.26, one of my favorite ones, then God said, let us make mankind in our image. And that's just about half, okay? That's about half, just seven times in the first chapter of the creation story. And what God is doing the most out of all of that is he is creating and he's calling things. Now, imagine the beginning of creation. The moment God moved arguably more than he has ever in the history of history. The moment where God moved the absolute most, he didn't lift a finger. He spoke. Sound came forth. Something happened. God spoke, and it happened. Now, I doubt it was English. I doubt it was French. I doubt it was even audible, right? But the sound of God is evident in this movement. In fact, Genesis 3, I love the story when Adam and Eve recognized God after, you know, they bit the fruit, they messed up, they made a mistake. Adam and Eve recognized God, which is, which is, we can say that as if it's normal, but it shows how close that relationship is, right? Adam and Eve recognized God, not by what they saw, but by what they hear. This is huge. Genesis 3, 8. Then the man, Adam, and his wife, Eve, they heard the sound of of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the sound of the Lord God. Now, so far in the Bible, we see that God has said things and that God has called things, but this is the first time he is heard by something else, by someone else. And what I want you to understand is that God's presence in that moment, it wasn't a feeling, it wasn't a thought, it wasn't an emotion, and it wasn't a vent. It was a sound, the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden. And if you're wondering where the presence of God is in your life, I want you to stop searching your feelings for it. I want you to stop searching your emotions or fighting your thoughts about it. Maybe there's just so much other sound going on in your life that you might not be able to hear it as much as you wish you could. Now, I'm not asking you if you can hear God, but I do want to ask you if you could. If God was speaking in your life right now, could you hear him? If God was moving in your life right now, could you recognize him? If you were feeling down and out and you don't think anything is going your way, could you still believe that God is good? For instance, why can you hear me right now? Why can you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth right now? Because you're trapped? <laughs> no because not much else is going on. Not much else is going on. I remember when I was, I think I was in eighth grade, my teacher actually had two of his friends come into the class and him and his two friends, all three of them, they just started talking and they started giving the directions from the school to their home. And they literally said, this is before high schoolers 
had iPhones, we're using Google Maps, but they said, if you know where we live, you can toilet paper a house tonight. We were like, oh shoot, let's go, all right. And everyone got out their pen and paper and they started to like, try to listen and write down directions to their house, but all three of them started talking at once. All three of them started talking about what road to take, what turn to take, how many stoplights to look for, all these different avenues, and they talked for like seven minutes straight. And at the end of seven minutes, no one had anything on their papers because they couldn't gather specific things that they were trying to say. I think God is really, really speaking and moving in your life right now. But I also think there's a bunch of other things and distractions going on where we simply can't hear him. You see, the soundtrack of your life isn't whatever noise that's playing. It's what you're turning up and paying the most attention to. It's your phone, it's your culture, it's your schedule, it's your busyness, it's your own thoughts, it's your beliefs about yourselves. These noises, those sounds, are the most prominent things in our lives today. And for you to actually take action the way you were meant to, we need to be able to recognize God's sound, recognize His voice in our lives, which can only happen when we turn the other voices down, the other sounds down, and let His be the main one for long enough for you not just to be familiar with it, but to recognize it, to know it, and to long for it. What I love is that Jesus even said something relating to this. Jesus, at one point in his life, is talking to a group of people, and he's describing a common uh, worker's day. He's, he's describing the work of a shepherd, right, who shepherds sheep. And he, in the Bible with Jesus, is actually referred to our shepherd as he leads us. So take a look at this slide. It's John 10, 2 through 5. It says, The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own sheep, he, the shepherd, goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus here is emphasizing that recognition is a symptom of relationship. Recognition is a symptom of relationship. And I want you to think critically about your own life. Who right now are the stranger's voices in your life? Who or what are you following that just isn't as fulfilling as you really hoped it would be? And how many times have you gone back to that thing hoping that it would change? If I'm going to be completely honest, most often, that voice isn't unfamiliar. That stranger's voice, it's not one we don't know. We know it. We're familiar with it because it's our own voice. Our own thoughts telling us that we're not good enough. Our own voice saying that we're, we, are, we are the thoughts we think and that we are the mistakes that we make. Our own voice sometimes is the one that we need to turn down. Sometimes we just need to listen. I know, mind-blowing thought, but sometimes we just need to listen for what God could be saying to us. But that can't happen when we're listening to everything else. And you see, it's when we shut out the other voices that we can hear God calling out to us. And it's at that moment where if we reach out when we hear him call, that's when we will have the soundtrack of our lives back. That's when we will have his presence and we will want nothing else. I think that's where we will be right where we are created to be. And I want to leave you with one simple point that will encourage you this upcoming week when it comes to your relationship with God, and that is this. You will recognize the presence of God when he becomes the loudest voice in your life. I want to say that again. You will recognize the presence of God when he is the loudest voice in your life. God is always speaking. He is always moving. And if we're too busy or loud ourselves, we may feel as though he left. But all that's really happened is we filled that space. We filled that void with something else. So the idea of being still isn't just said to be said. It, it, it's actually a posture. It's a command so that you can properly be positioned to listen to God. Look, just look at these examples, this one slide. Psalm 37, 7 says, Be still. In the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Psalm 62, 5 through 6 says, Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope 
is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then classic, super strong verse, Psalm 46, 10. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. When it comes to listening, my encouragement from you this week specifically is to understand that the volume of God's voice may, ne may never increase over your life. The volume of his voice may never increase, but your intentionality can. Your intentionality to listen, to shut other noises out, and to give him the space to speak. Your intentionality for that can always, always increase. Because I believe that God's presence in your life is more about the space that you give him than the silence that you formerly keep. Give him space. Give him space to move, space to speak, space to fill you up and to love you the way that he designed you to be loved. And believe it or not, no one is standing in your way of that. That's what's so mind-boggling for all this. This isn't a crazy maze that you have to figure out yourself. You just have to give God space to move, give God the space to speak, and no one has more control over that in your life than you. You decide if and when you want to do that this week. You have that control. And if you use that time to quiet yourself and your mind and your heart down, you may just hear something that you haven't heard before. And I want to encourage you to, this is my very final thing, I want to encourage you to do something this week, every morning. Every morning I want you to set your alarm for whatever time you usually set it up. But before you get out of bed, I just want you to go to Spotify, go to YouTube, whatever place you listen to music. And I want you to listen to this one song. And I just want you to close your eyes and let the reality and the truth of this song be the very first thing that you hear. The song is called Nothing Else by Cody Carnes. I want you to give God the first five minutes of your day this week, every single day, and just let the truth of that song soak in. And I promise you, you will notice the presence of God when you and allow his voice to be the loudest thing in your life. Now, as always, I love you. Proud of you all here at CCV. If you're a student, your family, we love you, and we can't wait to see you again next week at 6. Have an awesome week.